Yeah, it is. Congratulations to Italy. And you know what? Let's, let's bring in uh, Dean Ashton, shall we? The former England striker who uh, you and I, Dean, were out uh, in Italy, in Rome, for the first couple of weeks of the tournament. We saw the three Italy group games and we clocked pretty much straight away just how good they were. And when I was just listening to that, some of your commentary was in there, Dean. I was just listening to that thinking, it got, it got me wondering, actually, for England to take it to 120 minutes and not be beaten over those 120 minutes by the best team in the tournament, it puts a slightly different angle on, on England's performance in that final. Maybe they did better than we all thought. I think you've got a great point. I think it's so easy to maybe look at the reasons why we should have won it or what a great opportunity it was. We'll never get a better opportunity to, to win a major tournament. It's easy to forget just how good the Italians were throughout the tournament and in the final, considering they went 1-0 down so early and looked a little bit shell-shocked in the first 20 minutes. You know, that experience, they were calm, they knew the quality that they had, um, and they dominated the game after that. And and they had done throughout the whole tournament. They were able to dominate most of the games that they were in, other than Spain. Uh, But then they were able to adapt. I think that's what's been so impressive about them is they are able to adapt to whatever team they're playing against. Um, And there's a a reason. You, You don't just go 34 games unbeaten just by luck you know there's a lot of work and quality put into that and and they were they were worthy winners when it comes down to Italy I I mentioned this to Aid Dean um, earlier when you talk about Italy not qualifying for 2018 uh, in Russia right and a few players uh, stepped away, retired from international football or they sacked the manager Mancini comes in and suddenly the next tournament they win it I think it's similar thing happened to Spain where they were pretty poor. Um, they change it very, very quickly. They got the next tournament and they win it and they had some dominance uh, going forward. Germany did it as well where they were suddenly competing. Is it England? Do we actually give ourselves too long to achieve greatness and become winners? Um, I think that's a great point, actually. Yeah, I mean, we, we sort of plan ahead, don't we? Well, in, uh, we certainly the FA did in terms of well we need to build towards this tournament and that tournament well it's it's about the next tournament you're mm. right and what Mancini did was he recognised that the team and the style needed to change slightly they've never never gone away from what's always made them great which is they're defensively incredible they're happy to you know foul people when it needs to be done Chiellini <laughs> in a great a great point Jorginho on Grealish as soon as he comes on. You know, they're not afraid to do that. But actually, what he's done is he's he's made them very much an attacking side. I don't think any team in the tournament had as many key passes as Italy did because they're constantly looking to attack. The way they press from the front, again, is maybe something different to what I've seen from an Italy side in the past. I thought England really struggled with that, trying to get out, even with, a, uh, with, with extra players. Um, in a defensive area, we really struggled to get out because of that work rate that the Italians had. They've just been absolutely superb and entertaining to watch, which is difficult to do. There's a spine as well, isn't there? Their their goalkeeper, even though he's young, is one of the world's best. The two centre-halves we know all about. In midfield, you've got not just Verratti, but Jorginho as well. And Chiesa and Insigne are magicians at the other end of the pitch. And if you add on to that, in various different games, various other players really excelled, didn't they? Spinazzola, Berardi, uh, Barella, all sorts of players. They all contributed you got that spine, you add some brilliant players to it, That that's a great team, great squad. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Mancini wasn't afraid to use plenty of players who hadn't even kicked a ball in qualification. I know that was a while ago, but still he brought in players that were clearly in good form um, coming into the tournament, like likes of Lee, Berardi, um, who started the tournament. Um, he wasn't afraid to mix that with, like you say, the top quality players that they've got. I mean, Donnarumma's young, but he's got lots of experience now. The the two centre-backs were just absolutely incredible. That stat that nobody dribbled past them in the tournament, I think is just incredible considering their age and what you would want to do against them to two centre-backs. But Jorginho, for me, I think, has shown for Chelsea and for for Italy exactly why he should be considered as, as one of the best, certainly holding midfield players in the world. You know, we go on about N'Golo Conte, but Jorginho, 
again, breaking a record in this tournament for the amount of um, interceptions um, in any European tournament, I think shows that it doesn't necessarily have to be somebody that, that puts their foot in, that goes and harasses. It's about intelligence. It's about awareness of space and angles and, you know, being able to take the ball under pressure, which he, which he did. Um, he just really impressed me as well. I think what Mancini's done as well, you talked about some of the players that he brought in when he first came in. I mean, I think he picked Zaniolo, one who'd not even made his Roma debut. Um, he brought him into the squad. And what he wanted and what he has brought to Italy is they've always been a nation that's full of absolute passion. We've seen that, right? And I think we've seen it throughout this tournament. But he mixed it well, didn't he, with that youth and the experience. Those two centre-backs, as you've talked about there, I mean, they're the heartbeat of the side, aren't they? And then Jorginho just plonked in front of them. Fantastic. Yeah, exactly. And I think there are some similarities to England in terms of giving youth a chance, um, even with maybe... Uh, minimal experience in the Premier League, getting them through the under-21s and into the England side. I think that's so vital and has been shown to, to to work. You can see that within the group, how the group get on. I think a lot of that is because they've played together at youth, youth levels. But we maybe just lacked that experience, that maybe that little bit of nastiness that I think the Italians are happy to, to, to put their foot in to make fouls that um, that maybe, I don't know whether, you know, the likes of Stones or Maguire, would they have challenged Saka the way that Chiellini did? He just didn't care. He doesn't, he doesn't care. It's about stopping the opposition, which I think is something that the England players will certainly have learnt in that final and watching Italy throughout the tournament is maybe that's something we need to get better at. But I just think the big thing with the top sides in Italy are one of those is that ability under pressure to keep the ball with real quality to play out under pressure. Verratti, Jorginho, Barella, the two centre-backs, the full-backs, they're so comfortable under pressure, playing out from the back and keeping the ball. And England, the two midfield players were outstanding. There's no doubt of what they do, they were brilliant. But when it comes to the quality, keeping the ball in big games against the top, quality opposition I think that's the difference in the final as I tweeted on Sunday night rather reluctantly but it was true I think the best team won Dean stay with us we need to ask you about uh, Mancini the coaching staff that he had as well and uh, whether Jorginho should be uh, a serious contender for the Ballon d'Or I think he should be a contender should he actually win it 08717 if you want to join in let's drive on TalkSport with WeBuyAndyCar.com buying without part exchanging could get a bigger discount on your next car 